Hi guys, welcome back. So I have a couple of stamps, a stamp set and a die set. So Meow Loween from Mama Elephant, as well as their Slim Woodline, Woodland. <laughs> Helps if I can say that right. Um, Slimline die, and I thought we'd make a spooky Halloween scene card. I've already stamped and coloured and cut out my images just to save a lot of time because <laughs> it took me a little while. Um, but these are the colours we're going to use um, for the background. So we have squeezed lemonade, twisted citron, seedless preserves, chipped sapphire and black soot in a distress oxide ink. Um, and the background piece is going to be um, I believe it is three and a half by eight and a half, which is the front of a standard, a, uh, sorry, not A2, standard slimline card. And I'm using some Bristol Smooth cardstock. I love using this for ink blending. It works beautifully. It's just the best. So, <laughs> um, so I'm grabbing some, um, well, for me, they're like little blender brushes. These are actually makeup brushes. So, <laughs> so to start with, I'm taking the squeezed lemonade and I'm going to create my moon roughly in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. So just getting my moon in. And then I will take the Twisted Citron and tr attempt to create some ground. Now, I didn't need to actually add this color at all. Um, this would be good if this was going to be the scene itself um, by creating a ground with the, the Twisted Citron. But um i didn't need that because of the dye but it still looks very cool in the end so then i'm taking the seedless preserves and this is where it's going to look like a total hot mess for a long time <laughs> um, until we get this properly blended um, and i'm going to go back and forth between the um the ground layers if you like so the seedless preserves and the twisted citron and then also the moon but you will see as we bring in the darker colors, like the um, chip sapphire, it, the moon starts to become more, um, like it picks up some of that color because the, the blending on here is just so good that it just adds, it, it picks up the color really, really easily. So you've got to be careful. So even there, you can see that the seedless preserves landed up being moved into the moon. <laughs> so, but by the time we've finished this and we've got all the colors on and we've blended and we've, um, you know, go back and forth, eventually you just, you can't really see that. You can't tell so much that, you know, I've landed up with some chip sapphire in my moon and things like that. So now there are some dyes, uh, not dyes, um, some Tim Holtz, uh, what are they called? They're like stencils and masks for the moon. The moon stencils and masks, I think that's what it's called. Um, I have used those before and actually I could have done that here and created like a a more realistic moon in the background and I think there's one that is small enough that that would have actually fit really nicely in that space so I could have used that but or I could have used a mask um, with just a circle die cut out of some um, like stickered paper and sort of created the moon so the shape of the moon was very um, smooth around the edges if that makes sense because you'll be blending over that mask and then <clears throat> then taking the mask off to then color your moon in. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I didn't, I just kind of went with it. So I have this kind of weird yellowy moon now, <laughs> but actually because it's Halloween, it's fine. It's spooky, it gives that look. That's what I'm going with. So this is the, the background as it sort of stands, <laughs> if you will. Um, and I will add, I'm just gonna clean up here for a second. And then I will add some um, black soot around the edges. Um, I just thought I'd get rid of this color because if that color then picks up with the black soot ink, it will literally drag that color back on there and you'll end up with even more of a mess. Um, now, if that's what you're going for, that's fine. But sometimes when you mix too many colors together, you'll end up with mud. Um, and that's not necessarily pretty. <laughs> Unless mud is what you're going for. So this is another blending brush. This is like another makeup brush thing. Uh, honestly, these ones are not very good. <laughs> um, they, yeah, I landed with these like wispy bits. Like it doesn't, just doesn't blend properly. So I think I need new blender brushes. But anyway, we'll, we'll get to that one day. But I do like using the blender brushes with things like oxides. They work really nicely. Um, or I might just invest in those domed 
um, foams for my oxides but nonetheless I made this work um, and just getting black soot around the edge the outer edge of that and again more clean up just to get rid of that so no it's done otherwise knowing me I will put my elbow or something into it so <laughs> um, or I'll put it to the side and my cat will stand in it yeah so once I've done that I'm going to bring the background back in and just spritz it with a distress sprayer um, and just sort of if you pull the trigger on it you can kind of almost control the size blobs of water that's not even a word but you know what I mean the, the size of the droplets that's the word um, that come out of the nozzle so I kind of did that so I had some smaller ones some bigger ones and I love it and I was going to mop them up with a paper towel I decided not to if you mop it up you will literally lift that ink and it'll be almost like a white not not totally but almost a white drop that will suddenly come out now that's great if you want to do a snow scene that's really cool but I didn't really want that so I just decided to dry it as it was and what it does is it gives it more of that tone on tone look and I just love it I think it's great now you can keep going you can it's oxide ink it's distressing you can keep going you could keep spritzing it and drying it until you get different layers of all those different um you know speckly bits that water creates I didn't want to do that I was happy with it as it was so now I'm going to add my little um, slimline scene to it and I cut that out of some black cardstock um, I just thought that would give it that sort of oomph <laughs> and make everything else pop so I just went with a plain background um, you can obviously cut this out in uh, again in Bristol Smooth and ink blend over the top for the different areas like the bottom could be your, your sort of grassy area and then you've got the trees and the treetops and things like that and I've done that before but I thought for this one you know making this kind of a spooky Halloween-y kind of card it just made sense and what I also did was I have cut the or left the background the same size as the front of the card so now we have this sort of outline around the edge of the kind of like the background is coming away from the main background piece that didn't make any sense so <laughs> I just thought it was a different look so I could have cut it down so that that background we've just created and inked would be exactly the same size as the slim line die um, so the black trees and and sort of hillsides but I actually like the way this looked it it just it was just something different so now that we have that the background ready we can now start to stick all these pieces together um, and I nearly forgot to do the uh, sentiment <laughs> so I will get that uh, ready so that I can stamp that and um, I it's just the sentiment that was in the Meowloween stamp set I just used that one I thought it was cute it worked with what the <laughs> what the little guys were so um, I'm just gonna roll with that and I'm using some archival uh, jet black ink to stamp my sentiment directly to the background um, it, it's just a good ink to go over the top of layers of ink you know that you've created using the to, for the background <clears throat> so this is the fun bit this is where you get to decide where you're going to put all these pieces that you've stamped colored die cut uh, embellished <laughs> all those fun things you get to choose where they're all going to sit so I just I stamped and, and cut out three spiders so I want to sort of decide where I'm going to add those I wanted them hanging from the trees I thought that'd be kind of funny um, so I'm just deciding where place you know where to place them and then I'll get them stuck on as well and so I've got one over on the left that I'm just going to pop in there now and then one over on the right hand side and then the third one I will just sort of figure out where because they're obviously the same size so I just needed to figure out where the next one want, you know where I wanted to hang that so he maybe was at a slightly different height to the rest of them I could have cut some of them off but I didn't <laughs> so so I just ran with it and uh, yeah 
and then just pop in the, the next one on so he looks like he's slightly higher than the other one. And then of course my little bats and my gravestones. Now the gravestones have like in the stamp, like as you stamp it, it's got a little like crack going down the, the, um, the gravestone and I think that's so cool or tombstone, whatever you want to call it. And, um, and I love that. But I decided to add some extra stuff. So it's maybe not so obvious here. You can kind of see it. But I basically drew some extra crack lines in. Um, different. So they're all different. Um, and added some spiders. <laughs> so I just hand drew them on there. Just for some added something to the, um, you know, to the, <laughs> the gravestones. <laughs> just for funs. And then just deciding where I want to pop these guys. Um, especially where the main characters are now. I love these characters. I don't know who the artist is for these for, for Mama Elephant, but I love them. You've seen the um, the Christmas ones that I used. Uh, was that last year? The year before, maybe? Um, I, I'll have a playlist lift, listed below for you uh, of all my Halloween and, and Christmassy ones. Um, but there's a playlist that of the, um, I'm sure it's a Christmas one that I used of the with it, I just I love their big heads. I think that's the thing. Oh, I had a there's a summer one as well that I have, and um, I just I love them. I just it's just because they got these giant heads and these <laughs> tiny little bodies, it just makes me giggle anyway. So, in the Meowloween, there are two two pumpkins. Um, there's also little faces that you can stamp onto the pumpkins, which would be really cute. Um, I left them plain, and um, I'm just working out where I want to put the pumpkins. Now there are two different sizes, like I say. Um, in the end, I only used these smaller ones in the scene and the two larger ones I'm going to pop into the inside of the card, which you'll see in a minute. And um, that just, I just thought that the bigger ones were almost like too big for what I was doing here, even though they would have still worked because they're all part of the same stamp set. Um, and then for my um, my Dracula, I thought he needed to look like he was kind of flying. So you'll see in a second what I attempt to do with him. So for the witch, I am just popping her up on her little broom um, and being aware of her hat. Her hat kind of took her above the <laughs> the line of the... Um, like the edge of the card so I just had to move things around so that's where wet adhesive comes in handy because you can move things a little bit as you go um you've got a little bit of wiggle room um with wet adhesive because you can move things you don't have lots of time but you have enough time to move it if you need to just shimmy it over or something and then I have my franken <laughs> my franken cat <laughs> I don't know what these guys are called um the skeletons over to the left um and then like i say we've got little dracula here <laughs> and i thought it'd be kind of fun if he looked like he was either had landed on the pumpkin or he was flying so i'm going to tilt him to uh tilt him off to the side just so it looks like he's sort of about to land on the pumpkin or he's you know hovering above it or something that was the idea in my head so just going to pop some acrylic blocks on that to allow the adhesive no, I'm not. I'm going to add the bats. I nearly forgot the bats again. Um, add the bats into the scene as well. And I think it does add something. So I'm glad I actually stamped and colored them. And again, these are all these stamps are from that same stamp set, including the sentiment, which I think I said earlier. Um, but they're all from the one stamp set. So think about the stamp sets you have um, and think about how many things of how many of those elements in that stamp set you can use on one card and you'll be surprised there's tons of stuff you can do especially if they've got extra pieces like like the spiders the bats the pumpkins you can then use those as almost like you can create more of them so that um you know you've got extra of those sort of elements or pieces um to add to the scene so once I've done that, I stuck the two larger ones into the inside of the card. And now I'm going to pop this onto the front of the card. Um, and that will cover the whole front. So the card base is eight and a half by seven scored at three and a half. Yes, I think I got that right. <laughs> 
Um, I think, I believe that's a standard uh, slimline card. Um, so that's that's the card. That's um, all done and dusted. Um, I think it turned out really nice. Even that moon <laughs> with all the extra colours that landed up going into it. I still think it worked out really, really nicely. And it's completely flat, but it just created this cool scene. Oh, also, I added some white detail um, with a white gel pen to the eyes and their cheeks. And I also added glossy accents to their eyes. So I did the glossy accents before I added the white dots to their eyes. Um, but I added glossy accents to the bats and the spiders as well. So just those little details make a big difference. So until next time, guys, bye for now.